Welcome back to the channel. I've got a really fun adventure planned. For the next week, I've got a 250cc Mutt Mastiff bike. It also comes in a 125 and it's a brilliant learner bike or just someone who wants a great value, small capacity CC bike. So I'm off to the coast, which is well, the first part of the journey will be 80 miles, then I'll spend the night overnight in Ipswich and from there I've got another 80 miles all the way over to the coast. So for the first half I'll ride over and see Monica and then I'm taking Monica with me on the mutt. I'm excited for this. So I won't do a proper walk around of the bike here. I'll get it into a nice a little bit of scenery and do a proper walk around there. But I will show you it right now in the lockup next to my Bonneville because when I put them side by side I was surprised at how similar these two are. Here they are side by side. It was only when I actually put them side by side when I parked it up last night I realized how similar it is and that's a brilliant thing for someone looking to get into biking who wants to start off with a 125cc and learn on that or someone who wants to stay on a small capacity bike look at the similarity the 250 Mastiff compared to my Bonneville. Actually, dimensions aren't too dissimilar either. This is a little bit shorter with the wheelbase, but general looks all around, even the side panel. It's incredibly, I'll just come around the front as well. It's incredibly similar. It really is a very good looking bike. Incredibly easy to ride, but that's enough of that. I'll do a proper walk around when we get to a nice little bit of scenery. Here we go. Monica's mum's allotment and before we have a coffee let me give you an overview of this bike so Mutt's motorcycles British motorcycle brand they've been going for about six years and this is the 2021 Mutt Mastiff so pretty much every bike in the Mutt range comes in two variants 125s and the 250s so this one is the 250 but there's one really important thing to know about the Mutt motorcycles their engines, both the 125s and the 250s are the variant or a variant of the Suzuki GN 250 and 125. They're built under license. So these engines are absolutely rock solid. In essence, Japanese engines, super, super reliable. And if you own one of these and you get it serviced, repaired, maintained, all you need to do when you go to the garage is say that it's a GN 250 or 125 bike because those engines, the bike mechanics will always have plenty, plenty of spare parts for these engines. They'll know exactly what to do. So very easy, very simple to maintain, very cheap to maintain as well. This bike, the 250, starts, or it is, 4,250 pounds. And for the 125cc version, it's 3,500 pounds. And you get this motorbike as a 125, as a learner motorbike. So you can, you can go out, you can buy this bike, you can take your CBT on this bike, and you can actually learn to ride on a bike that looks, that looks this good. And I think that is an absolutely incredible thing that you don't have to worry about buying a kind of a plasticky looking bike. You can go out and get a bike that looks this good. And this specific bike, with the 250cc engine, I've ridden it for 250 miles on the motorway, and you can just tell that build quality from the Japanese engine. 75 miles an hour, two, three hours, no issue at all. It's rock solid and actually surprisingly smooth, but let me give you a rundown from front to back. So, big, chunky, kind of semi-off-road looking tire that looks super, super mean. Then you've got the short front mudguard, rubber gaiters, black headlamp with the headlamp guard, the bullet indicators smoked, retro style grips with this really nice tank just with some detailing and the Mutt logo there. Then you've got the flip up fuel cap and this, I love this, such a minimal design, the speedo here. No more than what you need at all, just 
just the mileage. I think the 2021 models actually do come with a little digital taco seat. That's a real work of art. That's the type of seat that you'd have to spend quite a bit of money on actually to buy. Cross-stitched Mutt logo on the back with a short rear mud guard as well. Everything blacked out, exhaust hidden underneath and the bike itself is 130 kilos for the 250 and I think it's 110 kilos for the 125 and honestly it's laughably light you can just in fact I'll show you this if you just hold it like that so easy just lift it up like that it's it's so easy to manhandle move around commuting in and out of London around the city it's a joy because it's so easy to ride and well, I've done about 250 miles on it. I've absolutely loved it. Chuckable, really good handling. Feels like a very well put together bike. We've got a bit of cake, some coffee, still got the fire just about going and the bike after a nice long ride. What more could you want on a Thursday evening? arrived at Monica's mum's the temperature has dropped massively outside so I'm so glad to be inside any Lithuanian viewers may recognize this Jamai Cepaline which is a Lithuanian <laughs> dish <laughs> and I've been told the pronunciation is awful so I'm so so sorry but I'm gonna tuck into this and I'll see you tomorrow morning so this is Monica's mum's cat milker and usually I swallow about a fistful of her fur every time I come, which is quite nice, but we're so lucky. The weather is stunning. Well, I can't believe how lucky we are. The weather is absolutely stunning. Not a cloud in the sky. Just had some porridge and some tea and about to head off. Probably about 50 or 60 miles. First, but will be motorway and then we'll turn off the motorways for beautiful single lane roads too great British seaside town called Southwold. Really hasn't changed in about 60, 70 years or so. So we're gonna head off there, go explore the area, go to the coast, go to the beach. Just have a brilliant day's riding. Just come down to get ready with the mutt, but I had to show you something because yesterday was a very, very special day for the Fiat. And that is because, let me see if I can find it. There. 170,000 miles on the clock. Oh, that's a good milestone. I really want to see if we can get it to 200. Just never dies. The engine, there's no issues with it at all. It feels brand new. Doesn't matter what we do to it, hardly ever service it. She goes on and on. I love vehicles like that. Amazing. So I've done about, probably about 105, 110 miles with this and it hasn't had the fuel light come on once. I'm just amazed at how much mileage you can do on it, so I'm a bit scared of not filling up, so I'll fill up now and then do the last 20, 30 miles or so. But this will be interesting, so I've done about 100 miles so far on the tank. It'll be interesting how much it's cost. So that was seven pounds fifty for 106 miles of fuel so that's that's very economical the bonneville would be about 10 pounds 50 11 pounds for that distance really happy with that
Okay, just parked up the mutt and look where we've just arrived. The coast. That is, that's a brilliant feeling. It's taken about an hour to get here. Mutt was brilliant all the way and what a day. Sun just glistening off the sea. Beautiful. six years since I lived here and I really really miss being by the sea it's just such a nice chilled out vibe love the simplicity of a bike like like the mutts all of the range they just make cool biking accessible to the masses you don't need to know how to work in a garage and mod a bike they come straight out of the box with everything that you'd want from a custom bike anything you could dream of doing to a bike that you own they've already done it the price point's accessible you can do 75 miles an hour on the motorway with the 250s and if you get a 125 version you can be a 16 year old or learn to ride on it go out and buy one take your cbt which is done in a day and you've got freedom that looks that good i absolutely love it it's just the purest form of bike no bells whistles nothing fancy just a brilliant brilliant stylish fun bike get ready for this view monica show what we got just beautiful sand dunes all the way along and in the distance there you'll see the lighthouse of Southworld and then over this side you've got I think Walker's Rick and other places and someone may tell me if I'm wrong but I think over there I think it's probably Holland or something like that right over in the distance Well, 
I don't think there's a better place to show off the gear for today. So, starting from the top, Biltwell Gringo S helmet. Just a great value, 150 quid for that. Really cool, classic, simple helmet. This is the first time I've worn this. Get ready for the price, because it is on the pricey side. I think it's about 530 pounds. Boda Skins, K Michaels biker jacket. So it's got the full armor everywhere. Looks really cool, it's pricey, but it's a really, really nice quality feeling jacket. Actually, I've just realized everything I'm wearing today is super, super expensive. So the jeans as well, these are Rocker, Rocker Tech, slim tapered jeans. Unbelievably good fit these jeans. They fit like a slim pair of Levi's. They are, I think, about £320, so they're on the pricey side, but they're proper single layer throughout the whole jeans. Really nice. And the Rocker, I think these are the Urban Racer jeans as well. Again, on the pricey side, but proper quality boots. They feel like they're made to last. Throttle Snake gloves. I've worn these before. And I think I said before, forget about any type of protection, but they look really cool. And that, that's my gear for today. But we're just going to enjoy the beach a bit and then we're going to head off. There's a really nice little cafe because there's a brewery here in Southwold. It's called Adnams. They yeah. brew all of their own beers and it's really famous. They distribute them across the UK and even further afield, I think. And they've got this beautiful little coffee shop where you can get some food, get a coffee. The perfect way to end the morning. And maybe after we've had a bite to eat, if I get the drone out and see if we can do, like just get the drone all the way along the coast here and show you the coastline. sheds for each fisherman they keep their fishing gear in there all of their boats in the harbor along here and they go out to sea there and actually there are a few nice fish and chip shops fish get caught here straight into the sheds fish and chip shops and you can even buy the fish straight from the boats brought into the shed and you can buy them and it's just a really nice spot that's almost stuck in time from about 80 to 100 years ago. It feels like it hasn't changed at all. Such a nice little spot. And you don't get many of these anymore. And the best thing about this, it's still a proper working harbour. So you've got the tractors here pulling out the old boats, boats getting serviced and fixed along here, fishermen coming in and out, real working bustling port. It's so nice. I'm a big fan of short front and rear mud guards, but if you're out in the rain and the mud, that's that's what happens and this is Monica's jacket all the way up the back. So if you get one of these bikes and it's wet and muddy, just make sure that you don't wear your finest suit. Thank you. 
They are brilliant, brilliant city bikes because they're so slim, small, light and manoeuvrable. They can squeeze into any gap and you can park them just right next to the bicycles, get them out of the way. A dream in the city. The Mutt over the past couple of days and over 300 miles now has 100% solidified in my mind the pure essence of biking. It's not about how big a capacity bike you've got or what electronic aids you've got or how how fancy the bike is. It's about freedom on two wheels and the Mutt has that in abundance. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It's not trying to be anything it's not. It's absolutely stripped back to the basics. The Suzuki engine they've chosen is the perfect engine. 30 years worth of solid reliability, durability, ease of maintenance. It's not going to go wrong. It's easy to ride in the city, it's light, it's manoeuvrable, the handling's brilliant on the country lanes, it does 75 miles an hour on the motorway so you don't even need to account for any more time on the, on the motorway because it keeps up with traffic, it looks brilliant out of the box so you get it and you don't need to do anything to it because everything, everything that I personally would dream of doing to a bike, the indicators, the short mud guards, absolutely everything is already done so you just buy a bike from that and you just jump on and enjoy it. You could be a 16 year old, take your CBT and be enjoying it or you could be a 30 year old who just wants to learn at their own pace without having to do a test and learn and take a test on the mutt. It's absolutely the pure essence of freedom and I haven't lost any element of fun from riding around on this 250 as I had compared to, for example, my Bonneville or the Indian Scout. You don't lose any of that enjoyment at all. You still get the same sense of adventure and fun and thrill and adrenaline as you do on this bike. I had a huge grin on my face riding on the country lanes. And, and that's what Mutt is. It's accessible. It brings mainstream cool motorbikes to the masses and it's exactly how motorbiking should be it should be much cheaper than having a car and that's what it does it's a viable mode of transport that's incredibly cool that you desperately want to own i absolutely love it that's it thank you so much for watching please do subscribe to the channel give the video a like if you liked it and let me know what your thoughts are on the mutt i'd also be curious to know anyone who's got a 125 or 250 cc bike let me know the highest mileage you've ever had on it because i'd love to know how high these bikes can go mileage wise next week i should be back to the bonneville the week after that i've got the absolute polar opposite of the mutt so stay tuned and i'll see you in a bit Thank you.